There is an interesting divide between the different sets of groups playing the Callisto Protocol. Critics, big YouTubers, and the game's media generally do not like this game. At the same time, there is a set of players enjoying it. I honestly feel a disconnect between the media on this one. There are definitely a lot of flaws here, and I would continually find more the more I played. At the same time, there is a lot that Callisto does well, from its atmosphere, the simplistic story, and generally fun gameplay. More importantly, it shows that the Dead Space-like mold can be applied to something new, and I hope we get to see more of this new IP. Join me as we dive into the Callisto Protocol. A large bulk of the action is centered around the melee focus combat. The hits look, feel, sound, and express weighty results. Each smack, thud, and strike is felt. Hits will often result in some form of an enemy body part being torn off, and all of this is done to show how deadly these situations are. This is not a mindless game where you can swing away and always come out on top. You need to be a bit more precise and are rewarded for your patience. Much of these situations are you trying to read your opponent, react appropriately, and and then get your hits in when you can. The dodge system is very different than what you would usually see. In most games, dodge would be set to a button, and here it is all on your left stick. So initially I thought you needed to read an enemy well to dodge in the direction corresponding with their attack. This meant that you really needed to learn enemy attacks to successfully dodge them. Oddly enough, this isn't really the case. So there is some wind up time before an enemy hits you. In this period, you need to swing your stick either to the left or right. It doesn't need to correspond with the side that they are going to hit you on. But many enemies will have a set of hits you need to block. So if an enemy is going to try and hit you twice, to dodge successfully you need to hit left or right on the stick and then swing to the opposite side for the next attack. You cannot swing left left to block two attacks in a row. When I finally learned this, it did make the game a bit easier in how you need to dodge. But either way, the melee attacking and dodging creates a set of strong, memorable encounters. Fights are intimate and very personal. Your melee does get expanded as you go along in the campaign with more options for your attacks, heavy hits, blocks, and even being able to integrate a quick gunshot in. After you get a few hits in, an icon will pop up on an enemy. If you can quickly draw your gun out, you can get in a few deadly shots. This is sort of like a quick John Wick-like attack, and this is always fun to do. After a few hours, you'll be able to use energy to pick up objects like explosive barrels and hurl them at enemies, along with picking up enemies themselves. This can be a great way to stun them or send them into spikes. Guns become more and more dominant as the campaign goes on, and especially in the second half. You get to use some fun toys, each with an upgradable alternative fire. The gunplay is satisfying as well and just as violent. But as the game does make a more focused shift to guns in the second half, I still enjoyed the gameplay, but I miss the intimate nature that the first half had. The lack of guns and more reliance on melee in the first half meant that you were right in the thick of it, and most of these visceral encounters were very memorable. The Callisto Protocol is not a game that I found to be very scary, and in fairness I rarely find games that are meant to be scary that scary. But what Callisto does well is atmosphere, a constant sense of dread, and your inventory management. It is a very linear game, but there are enough side rooms and nuggets to find extra items to make them worth seeking out. Generally, when it comes to the combat, I really enjoyed it. Now, story-wise, I mostly enjoyed what the narrative had to offer. This was a simple yet good story where most of the emphasis was placed on the plot, rather than being character-driven. Being thrown into this prison and trying to find your way out of it is compelling and a good backdrop for the game. There's a handful of characters here, and each have enough small character moments to give us an idea of who they are. It is a minimal story done very well, with the pull of the mystery maybe even being more interesting than the answers to it. Way too late for this shit. Okay, uh, inmates. Do not speak unless they are spoken to. Wait, there's been a mistake. My name is Jacob Lee. I'm not an inmate. You were inmate. 532-521. You address me as Captain Ferris. What? No, no, no. I'm just a cargo pilot. I was attacked by the outer way. By her. She crashed my ship and she killed my first officer. I don't care. Warden Zors. Oh, speak of the devil.
Now overall I enjoyed the game, but we need to discuss many of the flaws that I encountered. There were a handful of spots where the roughness really did show that this game needed a few more patches before releasing. For one, I opened a set of lockers, and there were items in there that I didn't want to grab right now, but rather after I cleared a few rooms. I came back and the items were still there, but the game wouldn't register that I could pick them up. In another instance, I kept dying at one point and restarting a checkpoint, but after a few resets, items that were there would now not be there. There and I couldn't pick them up, but if I loaded a save rather than restarting the checkpoint, the items would be there. None of this makes sense and needs to be patched. In a survival horror game, you live and die by your inventory, and not allowing me to grab stuff because the game needs more stability in this department is unacceptable. The healing in this game needs to be tweaked. The manual healing takes way too long, and it cannot be used in the middle of combat, which means that if you're in one of the longer fights, and no one has brought an instant heal, then you're screwed for healing. Now my proposal for fixing this healing system would be to let you pick up the instant heals and use them whenever you want. They only heal you for a third of your health, whereas the slow injectors do a lot more. So you have the trade-off of having quicker healing for less and longer healing for more. One thing that I didn't like was how you have to wait for a set point to get a larger inventory space and more max health. These things should be incremental upgrades that you can opt to buy in rather than being forced Forced to wait for a set point. Along with this, Callisto needs an item box to store excess stuff in. The general difficulty needs to be tweaked. Normal feels like hard and easy feels like an easy normal. It feels like this needs another difficulty option between easy and normal. There is a two-headed boss fight that is used four times in the second half of the game. This is the same fight each time. It is a fun fight, but they needed more variation or have different boss fights because this came across as lazy. The manual save system needs work because instead of making a new save point, it just manually saves the prior checkpoint. This means that you can go into an area, grab all the items, go to a side room, save before entering, die, and then need to collect all your items again when you restart. Why this didn't use a manual save system like Dead Space doesn't make any sense. Now my next comments are flaws with the story, and will contain spoilers. So skip to here for no spoilers, or stick around for some of this stuff. So I really liked Elias. He is your first ally and seemed like he was trying to seek redemption for prior actions. I have an issue with his death. He dies because his suit malfunctions in the cold, and Danny shows up seconds after his death, but no one makes an effort to try and get him into the vehicle warm him up, and try and save him. I'm fine if he still dies, but the group should have made an effort to save him, especially Jacob. Something else happens later on where the warden uses a set of guns to shoot down a ship our heroes are trying to use. The crew just stands there and lets it happen instead of trying to stop him. I'm fine if they still fail, but show them trying to actually do something. Both of these parts were really dumb. Lastly, I had an issue with the ending. It seems to just end lacking in some closure. So when we see Jacob sacrifice himself for Danny, she goes up and the game should have ended there. But instead the camera goes back down and we see that Jacob maybe actually will be able to live through this. And then it just ends. This fake out should have been used if we were going to get another bit of gameplay. Because of how it currently feels, that ending wasn't really finished and it seems like we're going to be getting DLC later on that's probably going to add on to this. Overall, I like the story, but these three parts stood out to me as weaknesses. Overall, Callisto is a game that is very flawed, but also very fun. In some ways, this feels like the game that was made before Dead Space, as many aspects were done better in Dead Space over this. Having said that, Callisto still has plenty of good things about it. Plus, it shows that the mold of Dead Space can work on a completely new IP. I very much enjoyed the melee and the shooting action. The melee focus on the first half creates an intimate experience, and something that I honestly missed a bit more when the shooting was more of the focus. I think time is going to help this game in the long run. Patches and the DLCs will probably help to improve this game, and hopefully help to iron out its issues. And I hope we see a proper sequel to this as well. It looks like the developers are hard at work updating and improving their game as the animations have been sped up in a patch, including how long it takes to heal. I hope more of these are on the way. As of right now, I do recommend Callisto. If you're interested in being notified of new videos, please hit the subscribe button and bell. And if you would like to support the channel and get early access
access to content, please check out my Patreon. All of the links will be at the end of this video and within the description. And thank you very much for watching.